Okay, welcome to part two. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the off-grid solar system. This is, oh, is it 12.4, 12.6 or 12.8? I think it's 12.4 kilowatt solar system. There's 38 panels, you can see them behind me here, and each one generates up to 320 watts. So you can do the maths on that one. I think it's 12.4 kilowatts in total. Now this is a ground mounted system because it is mounted on the ground. We were gonna go with panels on the bank side behind me, but we would have had to build all sorts of framework, possibly put up like some sort of scaffolding and mount them to that. This behind me used to be the remnant of a wood with overgrown, pretty knackered trees that really just destroyed our view. So we took them down. That wasn't my first option. I did want to keep them um, because we've got, a we've got fields out the back of my place. There's one of them. It's got gorse bushes, um, also known as winnie bushes. And I actually asked the farmer if I could buy that small piece of land to put the solar system on so that I didn't have to chop this wood down. But he wouldn't have it. So we chopped the wood down. I've now got about three years worth of firewood, which is awesome. We've now got a really nice view from the house, which I'll show you now. Now that's a pretty bloody good view to wake up to. And I'm glad that I couldn't buy that piece of land out the back of my place because I couldn't live without that view now. You know, I, I can't understand how I've lived here for over 20 years without having that sort of vista. It's really strange, but you don't kind of realize what you've never had if you've never had it, you know? Anyway, enough of that. Going back to this, all of these panels are linked together. They all feed back to a common armored cable which then feeds up to my small shed. And that's where we've got the batteries. Now they are two lots of 5.8 kilowatt batteries. So there's two times 5.8, that's 11.6 kilowatts of storage. Towards the back end of the year, I might actually get another one of those because I wanna go fully off grid if I can. I really don't want to be relying on any sort of external power company. Right, this is what a ground mounted system consists of. It's basically got uh, like a preformed base here, which is angled. I think it's 20 degrees or 22 degrees to get the right angle for the sun or something like that. Inside of there, it's hollow. So there's a couple of bags of sand or gravel or something going there just to hold it down, just to weigh it down. And then the big panels just clip in and bolt into there. As I said, these are all linked up and they feed through conduit. So, you know, each one of these feeds across here. We've got conduits going across there. They all feed back to a cable which runs behind this little raised wall um, along here and up into my shed, which is where we'll go now. And when we're on our way over there, I will say that we obviously had a digger in to create these terraces. I think we brought about 200 tons of stuff in, which was mostly like heavy clay, you know, just basically subsoil and all that sort of crap. And we had the big digger doing this during the winter and it sunk and there was a massive pile of stuff in here that still needed to be shifted. So I actually did that by hand and it was a hell of a job. It was maybe 25, 30 ton shift by hand. And I shaped all of this by hand. So, you know, all of this has been basically built up one shovel full at a time. It was a bit of a task. I just did it on a night after work, but it enabled me to get this in early season. And the ground has settled. It's rock hard underneath there. It's made a really good base for these panels. We can't even see them from the house and they do a cracking job. Unfortunately, my cats paddle all over here. Birds have been crapping on it, but 
they're really easy to clean although having said that I haven't cleaned them yet they are in a really easy place to clean and we've got a power outlet here we've got mains water up here so we could bring a jet wash down if necessary I don't think it'll need a jet wash though just a wet rag will do so they'll have to get cleaned at some point just reminded me there's actually two cables run from those um, panels because the they're effectively two separate systems there's 19 panels feeding into each cable so there's two cables run up and then they go into here in the shed where the batteries are all right so what we've got in here is two pretty big inverters so we've got one for the 19 panels another one for the other 19 panels same with the batteries, although they are linked together. Now, one of the systems gives us instant power, the other one concentrates on charging the batteries. These batteries can be charged by, well, I don't know, half eight, nine o'clock in the morning, in the summer, on a sunny day, and that gives us the rest of the panels for instant power without draining the batteries. They've each got little heaters here, which obviously aren't on at the moment because we're in the summer. And that's basically the setup. So there will be another battery going in there, probably against that wall in the back end of the year, because I do think we need a little bit more storage. Although I'll have to check the cost of them because the system ain't cheap. Now having the batteries charging and discharging all throughout the day means that they generate quite a lot of heat. So we've totally insulated the shed. That serves to keep the heat from outside out in the summer but it also helps to keep the heat generated in here in in the winter and it stops the cold coming in and really those little heaters are just kind of like a backup thing they're really there just in case the temperature drops below as a five degrees or ten degrees below a certain level anyway because below that level the batteries don't work properly most people would have these in their houses but I didn't want any of this in my house because it takes up quite a lot of space. We don't have this available space in our house. Whilst it might look pretty big from the outside, it's not It's not actually very big. There's a lot of wasted space in our house. There's a lot of windows, not many storage places. Hence, I just cleared out the shed. We insulated it, put them in here. And another reason they're in here is because they will give off quite an electrical field and I don't want to sleep in an electrical field. I actually turn off the Wi-Fi and as much of the electrical stuff as I can every night and I find that helps me sleep better. If I was sleeping within feet of all these things, I probably wouldn't get much sleep at all. So the shed is the best place for them. The whole system was installed by a company which was local, which again is important to me, I want to support local business. That company was called Sustainable Energy, not Solutions, Sustainable Energy Engineering, and they're from Washington, which is probably about 20, 25 minutes southeast of my place. I'll put the link to them in the video description. They're a family business, again, it's important for me to support local family business and they did a cracking job really nice group of people and when i you know suggested putting an extra feed out with like it would allow me to run you know heavy stuff from it it wasn't a problem they ran it out i wanted sockets here i wanted there. just various things shifted about obviously there was a cost involved in that not a problem to me and not a problem to them I'm very very happy with this system it's working very well if I want to check how well it's working I can just go on to the solar X website I can just check that everything's working okay see how charged the batteries are and keep an eye on my consumption um, and that's like from the batteries or from the grid and what I found is that on a night if the hot tub comes on a few times it can sometimes stay on for an hour heating up and it's like three kilowatts or something that devours the battery so if we get another battery we could possibly well we should have power to see us right through the night even if the hot tub's coming on and off and on and off i've got the big pond pump on a timer so it's hardly on during the night i really want it on constantly 
during the day or more or less constantly when it's sunny or when it's bright or light so it's costing me basically nothing to run and the idea is that electricity will cost us nothing that is my goal obviously to get all this in is a canny bit of money it I won't even tell you the cost because the cost will obviously vary based on what you want and the situation you need to put it in but for me this already has been well worth it I'm very very pleased thanks for watching I shall see you in the next video when we'll be looking at vegetable garden number one